Yeah. Uh, we got inside, and you have some diagrams of the detail of the inside of the of the craft that you wish to talk about. Right, and also that was uh, you know it was the 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 model ship. It was like a a, a peak of uh, of a cosmic technologies, uh, which may sound exaggerated, but uh, compared to human technologies at the moment, um, what, what, what we what we used the the, what, the, the, the the crafts and the you know the, the, the art and the, the way we could travel through space, traverse space that uh, I think uh, it, uh, it would be almost impossible to reverse engineer at the moment by uh, you know uh, the materials and technologies available to humans we very difficult to do. So you can imagine a civilization that uh, uh, you know has um, millions of years of their own history, a peaceful history. And uh, you know, their technologies are, are uh, in, a, in a such a state. Yet that craft had a, had a mistake and it, uh, and it virtually crashed here. Uh, what about the details of that mistake? And you mentioned that the craft was reactivated in order for you to um, have your experience by a second craft? Uh, yeah, that's another one. Uh, it's a, uh, it's 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 maybe can s sound slightly complicated, but uh, <clears throat> basically, I think you are asking how how the mothership was able to to cross the space or or something like that. So that's what people keep asking about about the uh, you know the propulsion system and and this and that. Uh, the spaceship uh, was uh, basically uh, say fueled fueled by uh, something like um, a battery. It had a sort of battery, battery and uh, it uh, enclosed a, um, uh, uh, say, like a system uh, that would be likened, let's say, to the processes that are happening in a star. Actually, it, it it had a like a little little star inside, uh, basically on the principles of nuclear fusion that are the processes that are happening in the in the stars that the, would be powerful enough to to bomb blast the solar system if they were not were uh, well isolated, you know and. Uh, um, um, captured to a system that's creating its own gravity field, its own time-space field, basically. So uh, the way how the mothership traveled from one point of universe very far away, thousands of light years away, to another was, in a, or is, uh, that it basically it does not fly through space. It uh, keeps uh, kind of cutting the space and uh, pulling it away from its uh, path. So uh, I know it's it's a little bit difficult to to explain, but you have to understand uh, space not being empty. Uh, space is n by the nature is not empty. It's not a vacuum, vacuum um, uh, quanti quality or something of that. Uh, it still it still contains uh, plenty of you know energetic fields. You know the space in the universe is not homogeneous. It's uh, the 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 energy circuits, the energy fields, uh, um, vary from from one part of of universe of the another. Uh, they bend around large uh, bodies or large powerful, um, um, like um, focal points of of energy, like uh, I don't know, kind of black holes or or whatever else. Uh, there are many, many, there's a variety 
of different time spaces throughout the universe that are very different from the field how we experience it here so even uh, if you if you are flying so very far I, um, you cannot rely on the space quality even if the, if the space seems to be empty you cannot rely on that that the, the speed of, of your craft let's say, will be same along all the way. Uh, also, so basically to avoid, uh, um, to avoid being uh, captured or being slowed down in a, in a system or in a time-space field, energetic field, um, this kind of technology is not flying uh, through space like lights flying through space, no. It uh, basically cuts and uh, and pulls the the space to to sides and passes through it. So you would say it's it's creating a, a little wormhole of its own. And at the same time, the the all the mothership and the zone uh, around uh, have to be. I'm sorry, have to be completely isolated from the surroundings to protect the the, the crew and uh, to protect itself from, uh, from being uh, influenced by other energetic structures and, and systems and whatever, they, uh, whatever is there. So basically, it can, by its nature, it could pass through solid matter. It does not do that usually. But uh, it's, uh, it, the, 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 the physics, like the, the, the realm of hyperspace physics, that uh, can explain of how this kind of technology works. It's somewhere at the start, uh, as we as we know, humanly, and it also it's very dangerous for mankind at this um, point of time to experiment with large quanta of energy, even with you know n nuclear powers and and all that. Uh, why and the reason. The reason is that basically whatever human technologies we have on the earth compared to what we had, human technologies at this moment are, um, say, they have a, uh, many times a large number of errors. They have errors and they are not isolated well. That still till, till, till now most of uh, human devices we use and the wires we use and the wires between the power station and uh, let's say our home and everything they keep losing energy they keep uh, releasing energy to the to the air so um, you know the um, this way not only uh, uh, you are losing energy but also um, you are you being uh, affected by the by the energy release and and then if you want to if you want to create a say such a kind of technology that would uh, that would permit you travel from uh, over the uh, across the universe you cannot have this happening because you would be losing uh, a lot of energy and uh, and the craft would be completely unreliable and and all these things so basically uh, in in principle human science can understand how the craft work but the sole difference between say uh, here and then is the is the yeah, the materials and is the precision of the systems and uh, if the if the precision of the systems is is great then you then you can really like say work on miracles with the same technological principle that otherwise works very or looks functions very simply right uh, so it's like the, the difference between some kind of toy toy phone and uh, and uh, your cell phone or 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 similarly, right? Um, so anyway, so the the, the craft they had uh, this kind of like a, a battery. Have you have you heard of a thing called element one one five? Yeah, it's a heavy element. Yeah. is it anything like that? Um, 
basic uh, principle? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's, um, uh, you know, this... Uh, if you... I mean, I would never recommend the, 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 the process uh, the, the, the this kind of battery in in uh, current timeline would be started here on Earth because it would be really in danger of, of blowing up the whole planet and half of the system to the air because um, it's like a, a one-time ignition of something like a small star you cannot uh, create a small star on the Earth uh, on the Earth unless you can capture it to completely isolated system completely like safe a black system hole, like a mini black hole no like a small star yeah and uh, yeah you know it it keeps uh, refueling itself by the by the fusion processes in the you know on the on a, the, the energetic spectrum is uh, powerful uh, enough that uh, uh, just just being and close to the system, it it is simply keeps uh, till till it exhausts the. Uh, is it like the, some kind of well, torsion field? Are you familiar with torsion fields, like uh, a donut field of energy, a force field? Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, that's that's a little bit like an extension to uh, of uh, what uh, what it is, but uh, we we really speak of uh, you know materials that are not immediately at hand here or only in in a minimum quantums, and then you know this kind of like energy center or the battery I would I would call it of the ship. Uh, it's it's one source of the uh, you know it it's the main source of the of the propulsion system, and most importantly, it creates this uh, uh, isolated alternative uh, time space field. So basically, when you are inside, you experience time that is adjustable. Because of course the, the ship, how does it work? So it uh, it had its own, you know, the like you, you would say artificial intelligence, like the central computer yeah, or whatever they, it they, would they be. They talk about having a, a zero time reference inside this field, so that the human beings can survive. Otherwise, you have a detachment of body from from soul, the living entity of of of. of mm. No? Mm, no. Yeah, right. That would be if if uh, if the the technology is, is used wrongly or if it's misunderstood. Yeah. It's claimed that something like that happened with the Philadelphia experiment. Yeah, yeah. Where the living, it, it would the be living dangerous. essence of the people got disjointed from the physical body, and they had a, a, a difference in in perception. Yeah, it's it's uh, also why why there are so many let's say side effects. When uh, when there is a, like a reality 3D contact experience be between some say space travelers and uh, and the Earth and the human world, we just discussed that yesterday with with Barry and we di discussed the the point why you know m there is such a heavy military involvement and why why there is so much uh, secrecy the, the 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 cover up of the of, of, of what is the fact about these things now um, and you know people like the the general public they either they don't believe it or they don't have the information they don't have the experience and something something it's it's just uh, you know it's just so easy you know it's just so easy like sitting somewhere on the on the on the mountain and and beaming, uh, you know, to the sky and it will come, come, yeah, and this and everything. The problem is not that the the beings the would be say malevolent, or that it would be bad. No, that's not the 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 problem. The problem is the space technologies. Because you have such a powerful technologies that create own gravity field, they create own time space. We call that uh, alternative time space. You know, alterna alternative time space is something you can, uh, if you connect it to a very intelligent computer, you can adjust the speed of the time 
exactly as you need it. So that's what we would use when we would land on a place like here or anywhere else. The spaceship would simply simulate the conditions of that place from, from those that were like natural to us. It would simulate certain different, different time uh, during the flight. So we would basically, we would never experience uh, thousands of years of flight. We would just like experience like three, four days of a, of a good sleep. That's all you would get. Because otherwise it would be very, we would think it would be inhuman for, for the crew, you know. We would think it would be very hard. We were not used to experience, you know, pain and this kind of hardship and hard work. We wanted everybody to be fine. And so, you know, our, our understanding of what is, say, humane and what is not, what was slightly more delicate. Anyway. So we would be, want people to be well adapted and not experience hiccups and, and jet lags and this and that. What about navigation? How do you navigate through space-time like that? The, the spaceship would have, uh, it had its own uh, navigation, its own like intelligent navigation. Basically it was, uh, uh, you know, um, prepared to uh, it, it can recognize uh, all the, you know, all the sky map, the, the qualities of the space. But, uh, uh, it's programmed to, to travel from one place to another. Program does not, program does not mean a simple way like you program a thing, go there, go back. It, it, it means it can, it can react to all kinds of challenges and different circumstances and situations and conditions. So it's basically responsible, it was responsible for taking us to the place that's where we went. We, we, we were on a mission. We were on a mission to a place that is, was still further than this Earth, this planet. And we were back home, we were on the way back home. And that is where this kind of uh, uh, the, the problem happened. So there was some kind of, uh, uh, you know, the ship itself, the, it's say artificial intelligence, the, the motherboard, that's a central computer. It detected some kind of error in itself. Just it detected an error. And because it detected an error, it wanted to repair itself. It just realized I have to land somewhere. I have to, you know, repair the error. It does not really mean how big or how small was the error. But the, the problem is that once it found I have an error somewhere, it's just I want to sit down, I want to repair it because we were not used that there would be, you know, there would be mixed functions, there would be error. The technologies were composed such a way that would be completely in check and they would be like kind of perfect. Wanted to land somewhere and this is why all this accident or uh, disaster, whatever it was, happened. So it, it wanted to land somewhere to repair itself. So it chose Earth because or, because or, or did it was, choose the people? because it was near because the you know basically the quarters of the space we are in now are uh, not inhabited are not inhabited by other intelligent civilizations there are parts of universe that are really inhabited like you would have, you, would, you could say you would have some civilization few you know thousands light like years away and another one and they would know about each other and they would fly by, someone would find you. But in this zone, that, we would, that, that was the very reason why we went to visit, why we, <coughs> sorry, why we went to see the other civilization, because they were still further. They were very far, they were very like uh, uh, alone there and they, they had uh, communication difficulties so we would go to see them and on the way back we are flying through this really vast and vast uninhabited 
you would say young part of space which is uh, kind of um, crude kind of uh, raw structured and then there is this young planet able to host primitive forms of life and uh, the ship needs to land somewhere so it chooses the nearest habitable planet in the you know you know thousands years around this finds the earth there is no other intelligent civilization in nearby so it landed here and then it f you know at the, the, the moment it started <coughs> It started to de descend and everything. Then it found, you know, it's it's in kind of a gravity loop, unexpected. You know, it it just did not expect there would be for some reason. It did not detect the the gravity loop. This so you have all kinds of challenges in the universe, maybe, but uh, you just would not expect this to happen. So it damaged the system further while landing. And that's why it could not, you know, repair itself so quickly and get us back. Otherwise, it would it would stay here, say for a few days, maybe like our few days, few hours, uh, uh, settle down, and uh, switch off the uh, the engines and uh, make sure everything is is all right and continue on the journey. But uh, during the descent. During the landing, the um, you know the, the 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 systems like the navigation systems were were damaged slightly, not visibly, but slightly damaged by the gravity loop. This is what happened, and that's why we we went out. Uh, I mean, we we would go, we would like to go out when you 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 just land on a on an island, you uh, you uh, on a planet, uh, you can go out. That we would like to to go out. But anyway, and then then we got to know uh, from the ship, from the from like the mothership, would tell us you you will have to stay here for a long time. No, we so could there was do another nothing ship, about a much bigger ship. No, no, our ship would tell us, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, that we will have to what stay. What do you here. call a long time? And no, it, uh, we were not told a long time, but see, we are here kind of till now. Right. So what what is your central reason for telling us this? What what do you need to, to do, or is there something we need to know, or you need, you need to tell us? Of course, I uh, um, you know I think uh, mankind needs to. There are there are many important uh, messages, couple of important messages in that, and one it's completely about the origin of mankind that that started from from these uh, uh, its extraterrestrial predecessors who were intelligent beings uh, etc and how it happened and how the human biology was formed how, it, how did that happen how did it happen i think we talked about it a yeah, little bit he, yesterday he I, I i just want yeah. to i just want to tell just this and then another important point as i see it is that our real home is is very far away from here and we are certainly destined one day to go back home in one form or another and so many people they feel like they are uh, at home on earth and and not everybody does uh, you know many uh, the very nature of human spirit uh, in in the nature of human spirit there is a longing i think uh, Many of us, they, we share the longing for not only for stars, but for kind of heaven, for kind of paradise. We remember the world from before, even subconsciously, you know, unless uh, people uh, have an experience, most of them, they do not remember what has happened at that time. But they share the, the, the subconscious memory the awareness, the, all the mankind shares this kind of awareness. Where did they come from? And uh, in my opinion, they need to know, and uh, the truth should be, should belong, belongs to mankind, to their hands, and should be explored that way. Uh, humans should not think they are 
uh, you know, the next uh, evolution stage of a monkey, because it's not true. And they should not think they were created but by some gods or some more capable uh, aliens, creatures, whoever. No, they have their own precious line of descent where they truly belong and uh, their intelligence and their, <coughs> say, their uh, ethical sense are the very reason you see why why there are so many religions on the earth. Because no, if you travel through the space, you would you would rarely, I think you would rarely find such a religious society as there is on earth and such a chaotic society with so many beliefs, you know, and so many ideas and hopes about what is the truth and, and how is God and where is God and who has created us and so many questions. This, this is just a reflection of the, of the depth of a, the human spirit. The human spirit is, that, I say spirit in a metaphorical sense, because it's also in a, the, the biology, the genes and everything. It's a reflection of these, you know, of these beings who were also, you know, they were immortal, and they were so very good and perfect and so very advanced beings. Is there any place on Earth or are there any locations where we can find evidence of this? Or you mentioned the craft was deep underground. Can this be found? Or I believe or about, yeah. that the, the, the spaceship may have sunk underground uh, in the area because the, um, unless it, it flew away in much later times, because what I have experienced was like the, the, the time in the beginning. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, unless it flew away in much later times, it most probably sunk uh, underground very, very deep, you know, but, and then there were many uh, geological changes and, and uh, moves and, and so on, but it would still be there and it's not, uh, it's still, it's in a kind of a hibernation mode. It's not uh, completely active, but it's not inactive either. It's still kind of re working on itself. So it and are there still the main the, the beings inside? Are they? Uh, I don't think there are any beings inside. No, I'm not completely sure because uh, in the in the first phase we all went out. And then also I remember later on, uh, people even they started to take things out of the craft, you know, like uh, parts. They started to, because they were, you know, they were like, um, uh, uh, they were like uh, on, on uh, strangers, you know, stranded on on empty island. We did not have any, any special so they uh, have, things. So they have used a stargate. How do they... How do they get access inside the craft then? Oh, who? No, no. I mean, they started to they started to take things. You know, like it would take your chair out yes. to use it because we uh, earth was empty. There was just uh, just nature, plants, trees, and this and that. So uh, years later in time, they they try to help themselves, so they, they try to take some things and gadgets out, even though they were of no use to them. Because the humans, as they became, that time they were very, you know, they, they were not in a, they were just like in a humans. They, they, were, they were not able to function on the previous level. But uh, there is no point, to, you know, to judging what they did because it was so so very difficult for, for how, them to how survive. How did they become humans? How was the, how did this process actually happen? Can you describe that? As, how did the process suddenly happen? Was it happen over what sort of period of time did it happen? It happened in many ways. I think we we spoke about that that part we didn't before. Really get into how the biological density of the human body was created or what made that happen what yeah I, yeah i think we did it it just uh, it happened by the gravity field you know because they stepped to a gravity field uh, we were not accustomed to we were not ag 